Today, let's talk about Control Net. I am going to show you how to use the new Zimage Turbo Fun Control Net Union inside Comfy UI. So, this model is very powerful because with just one extra file, you can control Z Image Turbo with Pose, Depth, Canny Edges, and HED all inside a simple workflow. So, before we touch the workflow, you have to make sure all the model files are in the right place. You need four main files for this setup. The main Z Image Turbo model file. This is your diffusion model. For example, Z Image Turbo PF16 safe tensors or the FP8 version if you are saving VRAM. Next one is the Quen text encoder. In Comfy UI, this can be Quen 3 underscore 4B safe tensors. The third one is VAE file. And for this workflow, we use the Flux VAE file called AE.safe tensors. And the last one is new Z Image Turbo Fun Control Net Union file. This is the special multi control model, and the file name is Z Image Turbo Fun Control Net Union Safe Tensors. You have to place them like this inside your Comfy UI's folder Z Image Turbo model in Models Diffusion Model folder, Quintex Encoder will go into Models Text Encoder folder. VAE file will go into models VAE folder and the last one fun control net union in models model patches folder. So once these files are in the right folders, you are ready to open the workflow. So before you try this workflow, you have to update Comfy UI to the latest version or nightly build. If you use an older Comfy UI code, the model patch loader node can throw errors when it tries to load this new ControlNet unit model. It looks very close to my previous Z Image Turbo workflow, but now one extra part is added for ControlNet. At the top of the graph, you will see these model loader nodes Unit Loader, Clip Loader, VA Loader and model patch loader. You have to set them like this. In unit loader, choose your Z image turbo BF16 safe tensors file. In clip loader, select your coin text encoder, for example, coin 34B FP8 scale safe tensors. In VA loader, pick A dot safe tensors and in model and in model patch loader, Pick Z Image Turbo Fun Control Net Union Safe Tensors. The output from Unit Loader goes into a node called Model Sampling Aura Flow. Coin Image Diff Synth Control Net node. This is where the Control Net Union patch is applied. The output from Coin Image Diff Synth Control Net goes into the K sampler. So instead of connecting your model straight into K sampler, now we pass through this control node in the middle. That is the only main change in the model path. So let me explain the control part in a simple way. We have one node called Coin Image Diff Synth Control Net. This node takes four things. First, the base Z Image Turbo model. Second, the Z Image Turbo Fun Control Net Union Patch. The third one is VAE. And the last one, a control image which will come from your preprocessor. So there is also a strength slider on this node. In my workflow, I keep it around 0 0.8 by default. So you can think of this strength as how strongly the model follows the control map. Then we have the AIO preprocessor node. I use the AIO preprocessor from the control net aux pack. I do this so I do not need separate nodes for pose, canny death, and HED. One node can switch between all of them. 
So the basic flow is load your reference image with the load image node. Then feed that image into the AIO preprocessor. Then pick what you want inside AIO, whether Bose, Death, Kenny or HD, whatever. Then send that processed image into Quern Image Diffson control net as the control image. After that, K-Sampler just sees a Z-Image Turbo model that already has control built in. So now you must be thinking how I set up resolution. Now let's talk about the resolution part because this is where many people get confused. In this workflow, I send my image through the resolution master node first. Then resolution master reads the real size of your image and shows it to you. This size is already supported by the Z image turbo model. So in that case, I do not have to change anything. I can just use it as it is. But if the image is too big, like a full 4K image, I do not want to push that directly into the model. So instead of that, what I do is very simple. I just click on the fix button in resolution master. It will automatically bring the resolution down to a safe size that Z image turbo supports. After resolution master gives me a safe resolution, that size goes forward into the rest of the workflow. The latent node uses the same width and height. So my control map and my latent are always in sync. Now the fun part. In this workflow, I use a coin based auto prompt node. When I drop an image and run the graph, it first analyzes the image and writes a prompt for me. There is a small switch in the UI where you can choose between auto and manual mode. For control work, if you want to recreate the same image with a new style, auto prompt is very helpful because it already understands the subject and the scene. So the flow is drop your reference image, then keep auto prompt on, let the node write a detailed prompt for you, and then you just tweak small things if you want. That's it. Later, if you want full creative control, you can turn off auto prompt and type your own prompt. I'll show you both the cases. So for the first test, I use pose control. I load an illustration style image of a girl holding an umbrella. It's a kind of anime style picture and I want to keep the pose and the layout, but I want to recreate it in a different look. Inside the AIO preprocessor, I select the DW pose preprocessor. This one gives you a skeleton type pose map. It only cares about the human bodies, not the whole background. Now I run the workflow. So firstly, Quan looks at the image and writes a prompt that matches this girl with umbrella and the scene. Then the D DW pose preprocessor creates a skeleton pose for the girl in front. And if there is another person in the back, it also creates a skeleton for that one too. When I look at the control preview, I see both characters. The result is really close. The pose of the girl is seen. The position and gesture are the same. And the background changes quite a lot because DW pose only locks the pose, not the environment, as I told you before. This is the perfect when you want to keep a character pose, but you want a fresh new background or a new style. Moving on, let's talk about another example. So here we'll see depth control. I use the same reference image again. This time in the AIO preprocessor, 
I change the mode from DW pose to depth editing V2 or a similar depth preprocessor. Depth maps try to understand the distance of objects from the camera. They highlight the main structure and big shapes in the scene. So here I run the workflow again and as a result, the depth map now shows the subject and the background together. Important parts of the scene are bright and far areas are darker. When the model runs with this depth map, it tries harder to keep not only the subject but also the background layout. The result is still in a new style but the feeding of the scene is closer to the original image. Next comes Kenny, Kenny Edge Control. Here I switch to Kenny and in the AIO preprocessor, I pick Kenny Edge preprocessor. It turns my image into line art with strong edges. And here I run again. And as a result, the Kenny preview shows clear outlines of the umbrella, body, background objects, and other shapes. It is black and white with clean lines. The final image follows this line art very strongly. The pose and shapes are very close to the reference. Now I test HED. In the AIO preprocessor, I pick the HED preprocessor. HED is another kind of edge detector, but it tries to capture more details in the important areas. The preview looks denser than can. There are more lines on the main subject and sometimes more details in the face and hair. The result tries to match even more of the small details from the original image. It keeps the pose, the main shapes and a lot of structure. So if you want the output to be very close to the reference picture, in terms of layout and silhouettes, HED is a good option. So now you can see, use DW pose when you care mainly about pose. Let's talk about the strength slider on the Quen Image Diffsynth Control Net node. So here let me show you with a real test. I take a square image at... Uh, 2048 by 2048 and Z image turbo can handle this kind of size on a strong GPU. So I let it run. I use pose control and strength at 0 0.8. The result keeps the pose, background and the overall scene structure. It really looks like a high quality remake of my reference image. In, my, in many cases, the new image even looks cleaner and sharper than the original one. Now, I keep everything the same, but I drop the strength from 0 0.8 down to 0 0.4. This time, the AI gets more freedom. When I compare the images, I can see the change very clearly. The pose of the legs is slightly different, like the women started walking. The posture is not exactly the same as the reference. And the scene still feels related, but it's not a one-to-one -one copy anymore. So you can use this trick when you want to keep the main idea, but you do not want a perfect clone. I let the auto prompt handle the text for me. That is very comfortable when you just want to drop an image and just want to get a good result. But sometimes you want to use your own words. Maybe you want a different background or a different mood or different clothes on the character, anything. So in that case, you can switch off auto prompt and write your own prompt manually. So when I do that, I normally keep the strength around 0 0.8 and if I want pose to stay close to the control map. 
So, for example, I use DW post to capture the skeleton post. I write my own prompt that describes a different background or different lighting. I keep strength high if I want the pose to stay the same. And lastly, I lower strength if I want the pose to drift and change. So if I set strength all the way to 1, it locks the pose very tightly. And if I set it to something like 0 0.5, the model still listens. But it feels more creative. So this way you can balance and control and creativity with just one slider. So that's it for today's video. Please like, share and subscribe if you liked our content to motivate us for more creations like this.